Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Netrunner from the San Francisco Bay Area. I have here a game night kit from November 20th, 2016. This is um, Intervention was the data pack. And the players here, we have Archer playing on the left as controlling the message. And we have Corey here on the right as Adam. And I have with me commentating today, uh, John Josecki online. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing good. Thank you for commentating. Let's uh, let's cover Adam first here because we have uh, his directives in play. I know you know this stuff a little bit better than me, so why don't you cover his directives really quick? Sure. So uh, Adam starts the game with three directives, which are three like cards he just like has in play to start the game. Um, he has safety first, uh, which all, they're all zero to install. Uh, his maximum hand size is reduced by two, but if he's under max hand size at the end of his turn, he draws a card. He has Find the Truth, which makes it so each time he makes a successful run, he gets to see the top card of R&D, but he also has to reveal all cards that he draws. And then Always Be Running, uh, which uh, means he has to run on the first click of every turn, but he can spend two clicks to break a subroutine. So Adam's a little bit weird because he has like a million things that already start in play, so there's like some complexity there. And uh, off to a great start already. So he, he gets two dirty laundry to start. Yeah, and then the daily um, casts, and he'll draw from safety first. Cast. Yeah, so not a bad turn here. Uh, yeah, and the the CTM matchup, I think, is one of the more difficult matchups for uh, Adam. Do you think that's the case? Uh, probably. It's a difficult matchup for most runners. But uh, in the case of Adam, having to trash things, I mean, it's like all of their things are virtual tour, right? <laughs> When you're, right. when, you're, when you're running. I, oh, actually, he doesn't have the have to trash one. He replaced that with find the truth. So he doesn't have to trash stuff, but he is sort of in this weird thing where always running can be a pretty big liability when hard hitting news is in uh, Archer's deck here. Sure. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I didn't, you know, the find the truth card is, is the new directive, which I, I think is his best directive just in practice. Yep. So th this is find the truth. So he sees a Beals on top of R&D on the success of the first run. He just gets to see the top of R&D. So, uh, oh, this is a good question. Do you go in? Uh, well, he can beat the trace, take the tag and clear. Um, but then he's low on money. I think it's probably worth two points if you ask me. Um, against CTM... Early in the game, it's when they're least likely to have the hard-hitting news, and Archer's already spent some of his burst economy. I, I suspect I would go through this data raven here and pay into the trace. Um, he does have more money, like I said, so he should be okay. Yeah, he'll take oh, the tag. Yeah, he's doing it. Uh, uh, yeah, so running the trace, and it's being kept at three, so he'll get the beal. That's, yeah, he has to clear the tag here, but he's, uh, I think he has one click left after that, so he's still uh, credit neutral with the corp at this point. So he'll clear the with... tag and probably take a credit? Yeah. That would be my guess. Because then they're both at six, and you have daily cast coming in. So if hard-hitting news comes down, he can still clear all the tags on his next turn. Uh, yeah, so he'll he'll be okay if he takes a credit here. Oh, oh boy. wow. He's just gonna, he doesn't <laughs> care. He's like, I'm going to install this brain chips. He want, okay, he wants his safety first draw, is what that was. Oh, yeah. And he needs so to he... remember to reveal his cards to find the truth. <laughs> yeah, so it is a hard thing. Find the truth, both triggers are hard to remember for both players. It's a new card, so that's going to happen. But... Um... Yeah, and the big risk here with uh, playing down the brain chip is he's open to floating a tag, which means he's open to get getting hit by all-seeing eye, which means his board and his ID are just gone. Yeah, all-seeing eye is really brutal. Um, I mean, to be fair, like Adam's kind of like a lot like a lot of the mini factions, they have pretty big weaknesses. Uh, in in the case of you know tag punishment, I think basically all of Archer's tag punishment is online in this game. Um, just because of the composition of the Atom deck, too, like you said, all seeing eye. So the uh, the need to run first click uh, with always be running is very much mitigated by find the truth, where he gets to just uh, oh he drew a sure gamble off of that. That was great. That's great. That's uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And then he'll play daily casts, and I think draw with safety first. Yeah, most likely he's at so he's at a five max hand size now well, due to the console giving mm -hmm. him the beal which buffs his hand right yep so safety first fires he plays the card it's is that creeper that is a creeper that is a creeper that is an icebreaker from like genesis cycle it's, i think yeah. it's a century breaker right yeah it breaks centuries uh very poorly but it does break centuries 
I he keep, Archer like keeps one, asking right? to read it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's it's one that you don't see too often. I, I think it's a cloud breaker. So sometimes you see it in that context. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be making use of the. He doesn't really need the cloud breaker thing with brain chip giving you memory for each agenda point you've scored. Mm-hmm. You tend to get a lot of memory with Adam. So it looks like Archer's just going to cover up archives and take a credit. Uh, Jackson's still vulnerable and presumably always be running. He'll he'll spend his run click on that Jackson, which will probably get popped. Um, but we'll we'll kind of see how how it plays out. It, in, it seems like he's in an okay spot though. Like br- getting brain chip. Um, ooh, he's actually just going to go to HQ. That's nice too. This is not a bad call, I think. Yeah, he's well set up though. Getting two points at the start of the ooh. game uh, and <laughs> getting the brain chip is really helpful with Adam. It's definitely one of the big differentiators on how good your start is so he just saw the biotic labor um mm-hmm. if you're adam here what what are you worried about with that biotic labor uh so the nice thing about find the truth is that he has a way higher chance of sniping the astro um biotic labor's big thing obviously is that they can biotic out their astro at any time that's like the nice advantage of playing biotic in ctm is you just get that flexibility that you wouldn't otherwise have like normally you'd need a sand sand or never advance or something so if I was playing Adam here, um, I would make sure that I would keep my Find the Truth online. I keep seeing the top card of R&D, and I put myself in a position where I'm actually going to be able to run R&D. Right now he doesn't have any breakers installed, so that's probably the first thing on his mind, is getting down some breakers. Sure. Yeah, Archer, um, just kind of playing a normal CTM game here. There's the Earthrise Hotel. That'll help him find some breakers. Um, yeah, Archer just playing like sure a he, normal game here. He, Pretty sure he just paid three credits for that Earthrise for some reason. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, he, he might have just something. picked up three credits because that's how many counters Earthrise gets and like forgot to pay one. Yeah, it's possible. Should, shouldn't be a big deal. Um, it happens. Yeah, yeah. Netrunner is really hard. <laughs> um, uh, and we got a Jackson draw. So th- this is where we, we, you know, the Astro might have just gone to hand. And uh, icing up HQ is an indicator that that might be the case. Yeah. Or even I'm just I'm even just worried about a breaking news fast advance to uh, you know all I don't know all seeing eye seems like the biggest threat here in this in this game to me. Yep, for sure. All seeing eye is devastating. Uh, we get two cards from Earthrise. It's freedom through equality and Temujin. Those will both be tremendously helpful in this game. So freedom through equality, the current that uh, you put in play, and as the runner, when you steal an agenda, you score freedom through equality as an agenda point right. worth one He's point. being cheeky here, dirty laundering the outside remote. Going to res Tollbooth, it looks like. Or uh, Data Ward? The okay. Ward. Okay. okay. So he'll so that's the three, um, and then go through, and then get his five. So yeah. sees a pad campaign on R&D. So um, Archer probably has something good just because he iced HQ. Um is it worth poking HQ? I mean, he does have a credit lead. If that ice isn't too nasty, it might be a good idea to just hop in there and what, see what he can what find. What would it be that is nasty? I mean, maybe uh, it could be another data ward right now, which is just go in. Yeah. Um, data wards, know, okay. Given... Uh, toll booths. He can't res toll booth. He can res Archangel, which is a little frustrating. Uh, mostly because mm-hmm. it bounces that Earthrise, and you re- you probably really don't want to replay that thing. You've only gotten two cards out of it. Yeah. At the same time, uh, the, the corpse spending, they're going to go down to one credit to res that uh that's that's not bad like i, I might tr- I might make that trade with the credit advantage being where it is yeah Un- oh. additionally resing that data ward does signal to me that archer doesn't have like a significantly good play with his money Ooh, enigma okay that's nice he he yeah that, he that's okay click. um yeah tr- triggers the turning wheel at least and he still gets that draw from from adam yep but yeah, like I said, I mean, if he's going to res the data ward to just sort of, like, mitigate the dirty laundry a little bit, that, to me, kind of signals that Archer doesn't have, like, a super exciting play, right, going into his next turn, and that sure. he doesn't really need the money. Oftentimes is, uh, I don't know, when I'm playing NBN, like, I usually want to res my remote ice. Like, a lot of my play is about dragging the runner through the remote as much as I can. Yeah, definitely. And so, yeah, get, getting that, that three credits early and just, like, signaling that this is a data ward, you're going to have to deal with this, is... Sometimes worthwhile. Cool. So now we see a little spice. Um, we had a uh, drug dealer there being drawn. Uh, no, pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that, to me, that would immediately signal Faust. Uh, sure. But 
uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if he if he does end up actually having the Faust. Yeah, and this is when, as the core, I'm starting to like really think about influence and look. You know, it's hard. It's so hard with the mini factions oh, yeah. to make a call if they're on Siphon or Faust or whatever. This yeah. early game too. So you see, like a drug dealer. So let's say he's three of those. He's got a couple brain chips. He's got three Tamujin. Normally, you'd be pretty close to fifteen at that point. But with the mini factions, it's like, oh my god, yeah. you could have anything. Just you got know. seven more sitting there in the wing. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a hard call. And especially where HQ is pretty wide open, Denny. So the, the benefit is that Archer knows that he doesn't have Faust in Siphon, or Siphon right now, unless yeah. he started with it in his opening hand, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Archer, at, at this point, has seen basically every card that uh, Corey has drawn. So, unless he, you know, he might be sandbagging a, a trick or two. Sure. But, um, it's pretty unlikely. Yeah, he sees a fan possible. sand on the top of R&D, so now he's probably a little worried uh, he's got Ooh. a Temujin and run the pad. This is this is actually, or he's gonna last click install the Temujin, I think. Uh, that could be. Yeah, that was a last I, I, click was install it, Temujin. Or does he have one more? Nope, that's um, it. He his third click was checking the pad, I believe. Does he know it's? Oh, he did check the pad already. Okay. Yeah. So this is a pretty risky play. If Archer has a piece of ice for that pad campaign, this is really bad. Um, it does tax his ice. I mean, it, it spreads his ice a little bit then, but um, this is a risky play for sure. If Archer doesn't have a significant piece of ice for that pad campaign. Um, even a pop-up is fine here. Um, sure. You know, then it, it gets it's... a little tricky. Like, it's now yeah. Corey's going to farm uh, 16 credits going into his next turn. I think uh, Corey yeah. having the... Uh, what happened oh, to the Temujin? Uh, Temujin is still there. It's just covered in credits. Oh, I see. I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Corey had four credits coming in on the daily cast. Uh, so I think it was a decent gamble to make. It's also... Uh, Archer really needs ice for his remote, and even I might be thinking about HQ as Archer after seeing that drug dealer. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, he's just he's just saying, uh, I guess you're going to have a lot of money this game, and that's the game we're playing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can really only do so much to stop them from getting their Temujin credits. Um, you know, the, it, Temujin's either they get a bunch of free money, or they get, like, reimbursed for making runs. Um, you know, either of which... Um, you know, as the CTM player, you can't really do anything about. Um, at some point, they're going to get all their Temujin money, and you just kind of have to deal with it, you know? And uh, Corey here, I think, is doing a really good job of, of mitigating against closed accounts and all C and I right now. He's kind of, this is what you do as a modern runner. You try and balance your economy between resources and in your pool when you're playing against NBN. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so Overmind comes down. It's going to have a ton of counters, um, yeah, it gets uh, yeah, it gets five counters, I guess. So he's he's up to six memory. Yeah, six memory, mm-hmm. and so it gets five counters on the Overmind. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so he's got uh, Overmind is one counter per ice, right? That you break subs on, or is um, it one one per subroutine? It's it's you break subroutines with that. Okay, I see. Yeah. So he's got a couple. He'll, get, he'll have a couple runs in him, and notably, um, oh. Oh no! Best defense. That's pretty smart. <laughs> it was I, that, I like that was find play. the truth, right? Yeah, he the best defense to find the truth, which is really Does really he good. Pay for that? Uh, I think he paid for it. I don't know. Okay. Slops. I, I'm not Slops. completely like I'm, I'm. You're trying to track everything here. You sometimes miss their pool, and I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, so drug dealer, he loses a credit. Wow. Um, uh, this is interesting. So, I guess as, um, yeah, take some Temujin money for sure. Um, that's a pretty easy click. And then, I don't know, I mean, what are your priorities at this point? You know there's a Sand Sand hanging out behind that Data Ward because you saw it with Find the Truth. Um, so, I mean, otherwise it's like a tour or something and Archer was being cheeky. Um, so you might want to go and get the Sand Sand before he can start scoring out. Oh, he's just going to keep building. This is totally yeah. reasonable, too. Pays four for this Earthrise. Sure. But I, I he there's also like 11 credits on Temujin right now. <laughs> So he just took a five off of that. They'll figure that out later. That something's up there. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. This is like this is a trigger deck, you know. Yeah, I mean, playing Adam is just excruciating. Okay, they they resolved that problem. All right, that's fixed. Yeah, um, yeah. It, playing Adam is just there's so many things. It's hard mode Netrunner for sure to the core. Drawing the uh, career fair and drawn another card, which he forgot to reveal. He doesn't have to reveal. Oh no, he doesn't have to reveal now. Yep, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is so hard to commentate. Out. Yeah, exactly. It's like there's so <laughs> many things going on every turn. It's yeah. oh my god. It's cool though. I mean, in, um, 
you know, Adam is a runner that did pretty decently at World. I think Chris Hinks uh, play, was the top Adam at Worlds. He made day two and I think even like top fifty playing Adam. Yeah, uh, and I, I want to. I, this might be his his list. Do you know the list? Does it have drug dealer? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know the list. I'm not an Adam player. Um, sure. So I don't necessarily know, but. This might just be Corey's list too. I, yeah. I, you know, it has it has Corey a lot of. Corey is not uh, one to copy cards. someone else's deck. Sure. Um, he's definitely a, a creative deck builder. So, hmm. And new new remote out here. This might be the tour. Yeah, I'm hesitant to check that, um, but at the same time, you have a lot of money. Um, but it, the one thing about playing in CTM is it all goes away pretty quick, in a number of different ways. <laughs> yeah. I think what what is looking good to me here is actually a click four run on HQ, mm-hmm. and the reason for this, Sand Sand is up, and now Archer has the money to res and score off of it, so it, it's pretty likely he's holding on to some agendas in HQ, and if you could just get those before he scores them, that's kind of the ideal way to play around Sand Sand. Interesting. So Corey here decides to trash the pad campaign um, after uh, getting his last four Temujin bucks. Um, then he's going to check the outside remote. That that one's the Thentes, and he'll trash that one, too. He should have a tag here, am I right? He, yeah, well, did he pay for the... He might have paid for it. Yeah, um, he might have paid the trace, you're right. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm guessing they would have, you know, caught that one correctly, yeah. being the whole ID of CTM. Yeah, yeah, it's like you're pretty good at saying trace for after a few games of CTM. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's actually surprising that outside of the pad campaign, Archer really hasn't got his assets... <laughs> You know, yeah, that was his first uh, political asset. I guess he's probably not a commercial bankers group. Though. All right, so here's another Temujin. Um, this one is interesting. HQs are good Temujin here, I think. Yeah, you I can agree. just run HQ once a turn on his last click. Um, yeah. and assuming Archer That's... doesn't get a data raven there, it's pretty cheap. It just basically costs him oh. two credits on an overmind counter. Oh, he's going to do R and D. R and D. Yeah, I, I like the HQ there better. It's funny Archer was pointing at archives, trying to be like, "Yeah, you want to go here, right?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if your opponent ever tries to talk you into something, you usually do the opposite of what they're saying. Yep. Uh, so I think this Jackson's going away. Yep. Um, what do we got here? Probably getting Sensi's back. See what face downs he's got. Um. Yeah, I, Archer's in an okay spot here. I mean, the game... The, there's a lot going on in this game, right? It's like no one's really clearly winning. Um, he, I, I will say that um, I think this game would probably be looking pretty bad for Corey if he hadn't have scored that Beal. Uh, simply because... Sure. Against CTM, early points are one of the best ways you have to win. Because when you go tag me, the gap to close the game out is much smaller. Uh, if and when you have to go tag me. So I, I particularly feel like against CTM you want to play the early game pretty aggressively because it's usually going to set you up for a better late game because uh, so, so many things can go wrong playing against CTM that it's it's worth just getting some early points usually. Yeah, he's been, mostly been developing his, his board, his economy, and he's been doing a good job of that. Oh, I do see that he has the Astro script in hand, so we'll probably see a score of that right now. Sh- yeah, he should just... He's going to do it with gonna... hand. Yeah, he's going to do it on Sansan, it looks like. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's probably yeah, better. Be, behind the data ward, I think that's totally the right call. Like, if, if, if you, if you know, if Corey wants to go trash that, that's going to cost him his whole economy, basically. All right, so now the game is really hard for Corey. Um, the game went from being pretty close to extremely hard. Uh, mostly because that Astro token plus the Biotic in Archer's hand represents any tag punishment he draws, uh, along with breaking news, which is pretty scary. Uh, it'll, it'll be pretty tough. Um, he's going to have to... Basically, Corey now is going to have to survive either some combination of exchange, closed accounts, and all-seeing eye in this game. Um, all of which are not particularly great for him. So. It looks like he's going into R&D. So what's he doing so here? He's no, gonna no res on the outside ice makes sense. Take the tag and then probably just run the trace. So you're, you're not really making money on this run? Oh, he's going to break it. Okay. Hmm. It seems fine. He has a lot of counters. Yep. Oh no, he, he is paying the trace. It, it like. That turning wheel. Turning wheel is a trigger I consistently forget. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard one. Sometimes it's you do one. like um, 
I don't know, you do you do a turning wheel run where you see four cards and don't steal, and then you don't put a counter on the turning wheel. <laughs> yeah, like that's, so much happens between like you're used to that success trigger on all the criminal cards, and then by the time you get to the end of the run, you're just usually disappointed and not having scored an agenda. And you forget. Yep. All right, so E3. This makes sense with uh, Overmind because now he only needs to spend one Overmind counter to break all the subroutines on a piece of ice with comboing it with E3. I was just thinking, do you think it's possible Corey runs hunting grounds in his deck, and maybe that somewhat explains the Temujin on R&D? Yeah, it's totally possible. And I think hunting grounds is, in general, as good as it's ever been, maybe? Uh, yeah, with with uh, we have Data Ward now, so it, it really you know new, neutralizes Data Ward. Okay, so there's a public sympathy. Um, not super relevant, but again, going to keep his hand size such that he always gets his safety first draw. And the other funny thing about this uh, is it's going to make Sweeps Week that much more potent. <laughs> yeah, Sweeps Week. Whenever I think about hand size, I'm always like, God damn, Sweeps yeah. Week. <laughs> it's really the thing that like kind of just disables any sort of runner hand, uh, hand size combos. Is You're going to play against NBN, and they're going to get like 20 credits off you. <laughs> yeah. So Corey hasn't poked HQ in a really long time. The Astro got scored basically as soon as it was drawn, as far as I can tell, or shortly after. Um, yeah. you got to be thinking there's something in HQ at this point, right? I think so. And the only reason it hasn't been scored off Sansan is uh, we've only had one turn since that Sansan yep. score, and he was at one credit, so he couldn't score anything but a break in the ace. Yeah. So this R&D run, Archer is a turnpike, um, which is really good for him. This R&D is actually brutal against Adam, uh, unless... Uh, you know, hunting grounds comes into play to mitigate that data raven tag or you know, s s anything really, but it's going to be tough. Uh, this should hopefully is an agenda, and he'll make this worth it. Uh, Temujin's helping a lot, but oh, it's an agenda. Yeah. It's not the right agenda. Though. It's a fine <laughs> agenda. We'll take it. He, Archer's on no money, so he can. Act, he actually has a window to close. Like Corey actually has a window to close this game out uh, while Let's Archer's on no money because he oh. needs to. I don't know. We, we haven't seen any of the cards in HQ, right? Like, that's the problem for Corey at this point. It's really, if he had made a couple HQ runs, he might know whether or not the exchange is there. He might know whether or not, you know, he might have, like, snagged a breaking news or any of these things. Yeah, he, he didn't... Oh, beautiful. Uh, so perfect. he's running Natch. All right, okay. there we go. This, so this, now uh... all of what I just said is inconsequential. <laughs> well, we, you know, I wouldn't have thought that he was playing Natch. I mean, it, it, it makes sense. It's a zero influence neutral card, so why not just play it yeah. in this meta? Yep. No, he's he's reasonably well teched against NVN. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd, I'd want to see that um, Hunting Ground, and then I think it's looking really good for Corey. Yeah, Hunting Ground is going to be the thing that makes it uh, uh, makes it really easy for him to get into, especially R&D at this point, which is really where he's going to be focusing his efforts. Um, but yeah, so no, he's got a huge hand size now. Uh, drug dealer's going to keep giving him cards. Uh, Tamujin's feed no and cash. Something, something that, that happened earlier that, that we didn't mention is that Dr. Lovegood went down, which blanks uh, drug dealer, meaning you don't have to lose a credit, but based on the way drug dealer works, you still get to draw a card, so it's, it's all good. So uh, Archer just taking two credits and installing ice over R&D, so really signaling that... He does not have agendas in HQ. Yep. So presumably this is pop-up window or resistor. Otherwise, this play doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. And we know Archer is good enough that it probably is pop-up or resistor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so Corey just taking some more money. Yeah, do, again, doing a good job. Like, Temujin has 12, and his credit pool has 14. So, and he has Natch, so he's, yep. he's really safe there. Yeah, he's got good rebound economy. He's got great ways to, you know... Like, basically, no matter what happens at this point, I think the worst thing that can happen is breaking news exchange, um, because then Archer's credit pool also starts to not matter very much. Like, he just needs a couple credits to, like, fast advance something. Um, so, it doesn't look oh, like Archer he... has it, though. He'd probably instantly do it. Oh, oh so, um, Corey is blanking always be running in order to play the day job. <laughs> <laughs> day job. <laughs> All right, so Pad can pay That's pretty good. End. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, you know, I think day job and Adam is maybe not an obvious include, but uh, if you can Dr. Love good that, then it works. <laughs> yep, yep. Cool. So, I mean, it's cheap. It's like one influence and eight bucks. That's like a Tamu the, it's a Tamujin turn anyway, right? Yeah, the funny thing about that, though, is he's he's losing one to drug dealer, so he's really gaining seven credits. But it's still <laughs> 
All right, so putting probably virtual tour or product placement on the pad campaign. Just, yeah. I think that's a really good call, actually. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Corey, he's already Corey's already shown to Archer that he has no problem trashing a pad campaign. Uh, not something that a lot of players will do. So I think you know the first pad campaign, if they're not wizard and they just trash it right away, that definitely singles to you. You know that they're going to play a pretty aggressive game controlling your assets. So. Um, definitely a good call here by Archer, I think, given that Especially Corey where the, the first one. where the credit totals are, this, you know, Archer is disproportionately wants this pad campaign yes. to be a thing. And uh, that, that means that Corey wants it not to be a thing. Okay, first click, it looks like going into, always be running into HQ. Nope, uses this E3 is... to break the click. Loses one to pop up. Archer will gain a credit, which is actually huge. Um, really important yeah. here. Oh, There's the exchange. Okay, so now we know that Archer's waiting on breaking news. Oh, and this was actually pretty risky for Corey. If he had hit uh, like a breaking news there or something, then New Angels goes away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or even hit a Beal, New Angels goes away, and then we have an exchange play possibly. Oh, that's true, yeah. So with the New Angeles, we're just waiting for Corey to steal something. so yeah. that, uh, Or to draw a Beal. Drawing a Beal is like probably the best possible draw for Archer because he can just immediately score it each turn. Yeah. Yeah, all, all Archer really needs to do here is, you know, slow down R&D axes, get money from pad campaign, and fast advance out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sort of wondering what's in Archer's hand, because there's a good chance that if he has anything he can install, he should just install it on the Sand Sand and pass the turn. Um, just to try and get rid of the Natch? Yeah, get rid of the Natch, or, like, I mean, he just put a GFI down on the Sand Sand, which he, he can score if he wants to. Um, yeah, and just leave it there, and eventually, you know, he's going to come through. He's going to spend a bunch of money to get through that ice, and then take it. Ah, there's the freedom. What's he doing with it? And there's one click. He's already left. checked. He's already. Uh. No, I guess that was his clicks. Now huh, that's a weird call. I think. There's... Yeah, last yeah, click freedom. If... if he has a breaking news in hand, I think you just automatically score it here. Well, Archer's drawn for an agenda. Yeah, not going to get he, it. He... Looks like. Probably not. If if he got anything but a GFI, he would have just scored it right now. Yeah, these are actually the kind of sketchy games as CTM, where you don't have that kind of natural agenda flow that you want. A big part of that is just not really getting the Sensi early. Um, yeah, definitely. Well, Sensi ooh. firing makes a huge difference um, in okay, CTM's so consistency. Tor or product placement on HQ... Ooh, that probably means that I bet there's a GFI in HQ, because any other agenda, I think he would have just scored out. Okay, yep. so going R&D. R&D is not bad here. Yep, there's the pop-up window Ooh, we talked about. This is good. So he's going to see three cards yep. if he uses the turning wheel, which he'll almost certainly do. Yep. So maybe that was part of the incentive of running HQ those last couple times, just to get some wheel counters and poke. Right, so Archer's uses... economy is completely rebounded. If he survives this run, he's actually in decent shape, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping Corey uses that turn wheel. I think that I think this is great. There's not like a Jackson in play. The density has to be pretty good. Oh, okay, so he boosted the trace a bit, or yeah, things are happening. Archer signaling. I quite... he has, yeah, <laughs> so I think Archer is signaling he has hardening news here. Oh, whoa. whoa. Okay, so he gets. Okay, he's just trying to win right now. Yep. Yeah, because he gets the Data Raven counter. So breaking okay. news, there's two points. So he's up to six. <laughs> he needs one more agenda. He got it, GFI. Uh, he was it. really excited there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he really went all in there. If he whiffs there, that Data Raven is insanely good. <laughs> uh, well, he can't get into the remote anymore, and oh my god. Yeah, he, he, he would have maybe just gone into HQ, which I think I think there was maybe a GFI in. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say. Yep. Anyway, that that was really well played by, I, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the kind of game that, you know, as a CTM player, you kind of expect to lose. And But Corey punished the draw, like, really well. Like, he controlled R&D. He saw most of the cards that went through into Archer's hand, especially in the early game with Find the Truth. And, yeah, he was just able to control R&D and not let his credit pool go, go too low. And he went all in on probably the last turn he could have. And losing the finding the truth to in the mid game was you know far less than ideal, but uh, mm -hmm. able to come back from that even. 
um, yeah, really well played. Uh, that, that was a good game. Okay, and uh, so that'll, that'll be it for this game. We'll have some more games up from this tournament pretty soon. Thanks, uh, John, for commentating. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right, and we'll see everyone soon. Bye.